Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of All Started With The Mouse Podcast. I am Nick Labazetta. And I'm Tony. And we have a little news for you guys. So last episode, I said follow me on Instagram at All Started With The Mouse 71. But since then, I have been hacked and someone deleted my account. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> and so now you can find me on Instagram at Disney Detailer. All right, on to this episode. Anthony, what are we going to talk about? Today we are going to be ranking the deluxe hotels. So you guys probably know, but there's three categories of hotels. There's the deluxe, there's the moderate, and then there's the values. Um, we love the deluxes. We've stayed at a few of them. We've been to every single one of them. And we just thought it could be good to uh, give our opinion on which ones we think are the best, which ones we think are the worst, in a nifty little list. To clarify, we haven't stayed at everyone. We've just gone to everyone to observe. Yes, yes. Um, I think we've eaten at everyone. I know I have eaten at everyone. You haven't eaten at Wilderness. Oh, no, you have I have, yeah, Whispering Wilderness. Canyon. Yeah. Um, I'm going through them all right uh, now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think we just realized I this. I mean, does the boardwalk have a restaurant? Flying uh, Fish. Okay. I consider their... Okay, yeah. And I, their quick service. Yeah, we've eaten at every rest- yeah. restaurant. Okay, so that, that's better. That's nice. Okay, and just to uh, refresh your memory, the eight are um, the Polynesian, the Contemporary, and the Grand Floridian. The Resort Loop. Um, and then the other Magic Kingdom resort is the Wilderness Lodge. Then you have the three for Epcot, Beach and Yacht Club, and the Boardwalk. And then finally, the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And Anthony, why don't you start off with number eight? Okay, number eight. This would be the only one I would consider you know, not great, um, the Yacht Club. Now, the Yacht Club is nice. Um, you know, it's very nice inside. It's got a nice lobby. But there's nothing the Yacht, the Yacht Club doesn't have that you can't find at either the Beach Club or the Boardwalk. It's the same area, and the other two are themed better, I think. Um, the Boardwalk is a better place to hang out and enjoy yourself. The beach club is more fun for families. The yacht club's kind of like stuffy. Um, I, I know I've never really had any interest in sticking around any any time. Have you? Every time I've gone into the yacht club, I've seen convention groups just in the lobby. I went there uh, to hang out the Allen Compass, and they're just a big uh, car company convention going on. Um, yeah, and it's just there's nothing, nothing really that says yacht club is better than. The, other Epcot resorts. Yeah, and so let's talk about the food. Um, I've never been to the signature restaurant there. Um, you had some steakhouse. Did you eat there? I have not. What we, was um? We had a we had a reservation actually when I went to visit Nick. Um, I had a reservation there and I switched it at the last minute just because you know to what to flying fish. Oh, good decision. Um, yeah. What were you gonna say? What was the restaurant? Captain's Grill. Captain's Grill. Okay, so it's no longer Captain's Grill, which I enjoyed. I only went once, but I enjoyed it. I had the crab legs. Um, you know, I thought it was a fine restaurant. I thought it was a, a nice place to eat. Our family loves it. Mom and Dad rave about it. Sam, our I little had, brother, loves it. I had a very good lamb chop there, and then the dessert was good. That was um, in our boardwalk trip, actually. And I will say, um, we had breakfast there, me and you. Yes, uh, and that was it. It was re- it was a nice breakfast. Um, we got a few things. Chocolate waffles. Chocolate waffles. I got lobster omelet. I got uh, poached crab, egg, poached eggs with crab on it. it, it I don't remember the, the name. The breakfast. I, I liked the breakfast a lot more. Um, it was very relaxing. It was very nice. And then the walk to Epcot was really nice. But that walk to Epcot you can get from the beach club, and it's close. And the boardwalk. And the boardwalk too. Um, so there's there's no unless like the price was radically different like i have a friend who goes to disney you know probably as much as us and she almost always stays at the yacht club and i always say you know even if you're going to do epcot why are you staying at the yacht club and the yacht club's the one that's usually the cheapest now the reason is probably because it's the farthest because it's the least popular because it's the convention hotel so if you're going and you're you know you want to do a signature or a deluxe but you're on a budget yacht club might be the best pick but if i'm doing you know for food or theming or a convenience location it really has nothing that the other two don't have it, much better. Yeah, I have no interest in staying there. Yeah. Where all the other seven, I really want to stay. All the others, yeah, that was the only one I would say, like, I would stay there just to say I've stayed yeah. to all of them. Yeah, but if you give me Yacht Club and any other deluxe hotel, I'm picking every other deluxe hotel. Would you do Yacht Club or Port Orleans? Um, Price-wise, what's the difference? I mean... It's going to be... It would be the same? No. Uh, well, their pro- 
normal prices. Yeah. Um, yeah, club, I guess. I think I'd go Port Orleans. I don't know. I just, think I'd go I, Port I, Orlando I, even. I am a sucker for location. Just the being so it's close. It's tough to beat location. Just being so close to the parks. Just because, like, Coronado and Port Orleans is, like, right on the edge, right by Disney Springs or I agree. Animal but Kingdom. both are theming. Blows Yacht Club out of the water. Oh, yes. Of course. Okay, on to number seven. This will anger some people, I have a yeah, feeling. Yeah, this, this is the controversy on the list, I think. Our controversial uh, one. But it is the contemporary. Now, yeah. now, stop. <laughs> Everyone stop. Calm down. My God, the we, tweets are going nuts. We know that it's right next to the Magic Kingdom. We know that it's a four-minute walk. But think uh, about it. Think about it. You it, got okay. You take like Nick's right. Nick said he's a sucker for con, for uh, convenience for walking. But we, you also need to have a theme when you're charging that much. Yet yeah, a walk to to Magic Kingdom, you can't be. But if you take that away, you really don't have much. It's it's not a pretty hotel. There's not that great amount of theming or detail into it. Um, and if I'm going to pay that price, and it's usually just as high as the Poly or Grand Floridian, um, I'm fine with taking a five-minute beautiful boat ride or a monorail where I can also get a great theme. Now, the, the, the thing I will say about the contemporary is um, dining. Now, we both have eaten at the California Grill. California's Grill is probably one of the top three rated restaurants on Disney property. I could say that. I'd say that Gico. Gico. And um, Gico still? Because I know Gico, Gico guys now back now at California Grill. G- yeah, the the at one point Gico was ranked the second best you you know, and universally considered the second best restaurant on property. And then Victoria. California Grill might be number two right now. And then Victorian Alberts is is the unbeatable number one. Yeah. Um California Grill was excellent. Um you know, it's a little expensive. But it's very good. You can't beat the view. You got the fireworks, even though I'm not a big fan of Happily Ever After. Um, crazy talk. I know. He's yeah. a crazy man. We can do that. That's a future episode. In a different episode. Um, but, yeah, you can't beat the view. Uh, me and Nick have a great memory of the California Grill. We met um, the host of another Disney podcast, The Diz Unplugged. Shout out to Pete and Charles. You were great guys. Yeah, that was a fantastic night. Um, so, yeah. California Grill is fantastic. I've never been to the quick service here. Have you? Contempo Cafe? Yeah. I have not. It's um, always on my list because I want to get like a, a cupcake from yes. there. They say it's great cupcakes. Um, we've both been to Chef Mickey's. And The Wave. And The Wave, yes. Yeah. I've been to The Wave for both breakfast and dinner. Breakfast, they say it's supposed to be great. It was good. Uh, nothing special? Nothing special. Buffet? Yeah. Okay. Um, And then I've also been to... The, wa- the Wave... I, I have a soft spot for the wave because it was the first meal we had on our first solo trip. Mm-hmm. So it was like the, be, like that was the f- beginning of our n- newfound love for Disney, our first solo trip. So I always has I'll always have a soft spot for the wave. Um, I thought the wave was very good. I thought the dessert was excellent. I remember, but that was my favorite part of it. Oh, the dessert was yeah. good. It was like a little trio. Yeah, stuff. it was a trio. Um, but it was nothing like, you know, I don't fantasize about the food at the wave. Um, and, and Chef Mickey's is entertaining for families, for kids. Um, I have no issue with it. The, they say the food at dinner sucks. I've never been for dinner. Are you sure we haven't been for dinner? We have not been for dinner. Okay. I was thinking about that. Yeah, we've never been for dinner. Um, I've never had a problem with breakfast. Breakfast is always fun. If you know, It's a great way for the kids to meet the characters. You know, If, if you're going and you don't want to have, you know, oh, my God, it's messy and there's kids screaming, don't go. You have to know what you're expecting. I just realized the Contemporary has two breakfast buffets. Yeah, it does. Contemporary has food going for it. You can't argue that. And one thing it also has is the drinks. I forgot the name of the lounge, but me and my roommate, we went down I think there. It's the California Grill Lounge. No, no, no. It was um, next to Chef Mickey's. Oh. Um, it And we had this amazing Long Island iced tea. And my roommate is a fan of the of Long Islands, and he says that that is where you can get the best Long Island iced tea. Shout out to you, Tom. Um, anything else about the contemporary? I I will say the only like restaurants and food are is, is an important part of a hotel, but you can get that food and not stay there. Yes. And, you know, like we we've been there multiple times for different restaurants, but we've never 
spent any time lounging or hanging out or exploring, which we've done with every other one after this one. Um, so that's why it's still number seven. Yes, you cannot beat the walk. And it, if the poly and the grand didn't exist, then yeah, this would be you know much higher. But I, I'm, I'd, I'm fine with a monorail or a boat with better theming. Um, so yeah, I, you know, contemporary is great. Contemporary seven and up are all great hotels. The Yacht Club's the only one I would say is not a great hotel. Um, but yeah, contemporary, you know, it's it's great. Uh, so let's go to number six. Number six is now. Uh, this is this seems a little low now that I'm thinking about it, but I still would put it here. Number six is the Beach Club. Now the Beach Club was the first deluxe both of us ever stayed at. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, because we stayed at with our parents. Um, it was the first deluxe they ever stayed at either. And our whole family fell in love with it. It's a gorgeous hotel. Super nice. Uh, you know, the, of course, the walk to Epcot. I think the walk to Epcot is better than the walk to Magic Kingdom. Oh, yeah. You have the International Gateway. Yeah. You have that little bridge, uh, the little walkway under the bridge. Yeah, they play the music. It's beautiful. Um, you got the boats passing you by. It's a much yeah, it's a much prettier ambiance. Yeah. Um, you just feel more at Relaxed. ease. Yeah. yeah. It's like its own separate world. Yes. Um, I th- But I think the reason, because we left the beach club loving it. Yeah. There's Absolutely nothing wrong with the it. beach club. I think it's just five and up have so much going for them. And I th- the beach club is lower because the boardwalk exists if because the boardwalks it's in the same area and it's so you know we get to the boardwalk obviously it's so much better themed on every level that it knocks the beach club down a little because the two things the beach club has going for it is location which the boardwalk has just as good and the other one is the pool best pool on property and Cape May okay yeah we'll get to Cape May in a minute but for the pool neither of us swim at, you know, we swim, but we don't swim at um, hotels. At Disney, yeah, we don't. Yeah. We don't go to Disney resorts for the hotels. I, I you know, I, I went into I went into Stormlong Bay. It was very cool. Sand on the yeah, ground. Yeah, people, you know, the know whole family the raved about it. Um, I just don't, you know. So if you're looking for if a pool is important to you, you know, a pool might be more important to you than theming. And if that's the case, the beach club would you know maybe be number one on your list. But p- the pools are very low in, in in level of importance to us so that's why you know beach club does not have that special thing going for it for us personally now nick mentioned cape may cafe cape may cafe we've been for lunch uh for breakfast and dinner um it's a great buffet uh at dinner it is a seafood buffet basically normal buffet stuff but clams and crab legs and you get your fill i've every time i've had dinner there it's two or three times um, I'm always full. I'm always satisfied. Um, and we did, was it just me and you? Did we do breakfast solo or did we do it with the family? We did it with the family. Okay. Uh, the breakfast I remember being good. Not anything amazing. They had delicious smoked salmon. They did have great smoked salmon. Um, and you had the characters, which were fun. Mm-hmm. They were in like their beach clothes. Um, but other than that, like I wouldn't, I remember the last time we went to Cape May, we were like, I don't know if it's worth the forty bucks. Yeah, uh, I'm not. A, I'm not in love with buffets. Yeah, like so that's why I'm never really crazy about it. Like the only buffet I really go for is Ohana, and I don't, I don't know if you can really call that. Buffet. I wouldn't call it buffet. I think the only buff well Boma, but we'll get oh, this Boma. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a good buffet, but in still in terms of food at the Lux Resorts. That's still on the lower half. Correct. Um, and I don't even remember the quick service, but their quick service is kind of a joke. It's like right next. It's connected to the gift shop. Yeah, it's super small. Their gift shop is bad, too. Yeah. And we didn't talk about the gift shop for the other two, um, but the Beach Club's gift shop is not very good. Contemporary does have great gifts. Contemporary does Fantasia have great gifts. Fantasia gifts, yeah, yeah. Bayview gifts. Um, yeah, the Beach Club quick service is bad, and the uh, gift shop is is not inspired at all um beautiful lobby beautiful lobby but it's still it's still just number six yeah um it's 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 not a beautiful lobby i'll say it's a nice lobby okay i can go because think about it like what's what's special about the lobby you think of the beach club lobby what do you think of relaxing Mm -hmm. that's a good yeah he's right it's relaxing 
Um, the best part about the Beach Club that makes it unique, I think, is the uh, what's it called the the one with the glass solarium. The solarium, something we, like we that. We might be saying it wrong, but it's the room solarium. Maybe? Solarium. That's yeah, you're right. It. With all the glass, that is really relaxing, really nice. Um, I remember when we were we had a reservation for Cape May dinner, and we got there early because we we left the parks early because it was crazy Torrential downpour. downpour. One of the worst we've seen. Um, and Ended we, in three minutes, obviously. But then we went to the solarium, and it started pouring again. And we were able to just watch the rain from there, which was really nice. That was fun. But, um, yeah, still, you, when you've got the boardwalk in the same area, you're going to get some points taken away for the beach club. Um, but still, it's you know still absolutely a great hotel to go to. Okay, number five, Nick? Number five... Not gonna sugarcoat it. I've, no, I was gonna come up with something, some big grand uh, reveal. Reveal, but no. Wilderness Lodge. Now, Wilderness Lodge. I walk in there and I'm just blown away by its theming. I, um, it's just so beautiful. Like seeing the, uh, what do you call that thing of Mickey, Humphrey the Bear, Donald and Goofy, uh, tiki, uh, wooden carving, totem, totem, totem pole. Yeah. That's it. Um, just like all the theming, all like the, all the wood, the giant fireplace. The Whispering Canyon, right when you walk in on your left. I mean, everything, it's giant. Everything about it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time I ever walked into Wilderness Lodge. We were going to Whispering Canyon. And that lobby does hit you in the face. And it's like, I, you know, I was a kid. I didn't care about theming. I didn't know what theming was for Disney. You know, we didn't care. We just were rides. And I remember walking in there and just seeing that lobby. It's just huge and how there were, you know, hotel rooms everywhere. And I just, like, my jaw dropped even as a kid. So that has always been, like, that's the standard. Um, and there's a reason that Animal Kingdom Lodge is so well-loved as well because it's designed almost basically the same. Just, you know, the architecture is the same. Just the theme is obviously different. Wilderness Lodge, yeah, like Nick said, um, theming is pretty much perfect. There's nothing you can complain about it. Um, you, if you get in detail or in depth with the theming, um, you can realize that some of the totems are telling story, like Native American stories. Um, there's a there's a theme about that has to do with water starting from the inside of the hotel and rushing out. Um, I think we've said it multiple times already, but I'm a sucker for water. So the fact that there's the waterfall. In the back, I absolutely geyser. love. Yeah. Well, no, there's the waterfall. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, there's the geyser. I mean, come on. What kind of hotel? How many hotels have a, a geyser? And the geyser actually goes off. Every hour, the geyser goes off. And it goes off for a couple minutes. It's, it's, it's great to watch. Um, the other thing that's great about the Wilderness Lodge is when you go in the back, and I don't, you, have you ever been there by boat? No. I mean, I, I, got, I walked to the boat entrance. When you're at that area... And you just look, and it's just Bay Lake. Uh -huh. You really do feel like you're not in Florida. You're yeah. not in, you know, the most popular tourist destination on the planet. You just feel secluded and peaceful and in the wilderness. Like it, it works. It, it's it shouldn't because you know Space Mountain. You can probably see it if you turn your head far enough, you know, in the in the left. But if you look into the distance, it's gorgeous, and it just you know Bay Lake goes on forever. And it's a fantastic view. Um, yeah, you, you can't, you cannot fault Wilderness Lodge and its theming at all. It's absolutely perfect. Location's great. You know, it's a boat ride to to uh, to, Di to to Disney, um, to Magic Kingdom. The only thing I'll say is if the boat goes down, because I I uh, spent an afternoon there once just exploring the place, um, and I took the boat there and it was great. But then the boat was down coming back, and I had to take the bus. Now I'm I'm fine with the bus. I'm not. I don't hate the buses or anything, but you also have to make a pit stop at Fort Wilderness, and that's always. It took so long because there's like three different stops, and I know people love Fort Wilderness, but me and Nick both think it's kind of trashy. Um, so you know, I wasn't a fan of that because you combine the two, it, the boat, uh, the bus gets really crowded. Um, so transportation can be a miss if the boats aren't working. Obviously, there's not a monorail. Um, Food. Let's talk about food. I've only eaten at Whispering Canyon. Okay, I've been to Whispering Canyon, and I've been to the quick service. Uh, Roaring, Roaring Fork. Fork. 
Um, Whispering Canyon is fun. Delicious. Yeah. I've been there for both breakfast and dinner. Um, amazing cast members, amazing food. Um, if you guys need ketchup, ask for ketchup. Now, I hear, and we may have talked about this, but they're going to start toning down the antics. I heard that, and then I heard, I uh, might have also heard that they're chain, they're not doing People that. People complained. Ho- yeah. Hopefully, because... If you, if you are going to Whispering, you have to do research before. You can't just say, there's a restaurant, let's go. Whispering... It, it, it's, it's fun and it's games. Fun. I, I, when I was a kid, I was a little kid, and they kept telling me that um, you know I was in love with some girl that was sitting there, and I started to cry. But it, <laughs> but it was still fun. It was a good time. Do you remember? And I'm sh- I know you do. When they had us take the, the desserts, take the dessert tray, and there was a, there was a cast member. We had the dessert tray, and he goes, "Let me get on top of that." <laughs> he pretended to jump on top of it. It was, it was so funny. that was like that was like 15 years ago, and I still remember it. it. Was hilarious. The ketchup thing, yeah, you know, they'll throw straws at you, and the food. It's not the best food on property, but it's still. I remember it being good. I enjoyed it. Um, I've never been for breakfast. I want to go for breakfast. Um, it's not. Uh, overly expensive. And it always smells great when you walk into the place. It's just like, oh, it just hits you. Right in the face. Yeah. Um, so then, Roaring Forks. I've been to Roaring Fork once. I, I don't know if it's Roaring Fork or Roaring Forks. I hope it's Roaring Forks because that's a better name. Um, you haven't been to Geyser Point, have you? No, I have not. I hear Geyser Point's great. Is that the place with the Bison Burger? No, that's Artist Point. Geyser, whatever the hell you just said. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we, we can keep this in. Geyser Points. Geyser Points, the new one at the DVC. No. Uh, yes, it is. Like, okay, I don't know where I went, though. Yeah. You probably went to, I think is you went to right Geyser Is it right next to the point. Geyser? I think. Okay, then yeah, I, don't know. I, I walked. I walked around there. This is, this is, this, this is good. Um, yeah, Geyser Point's new, and I think it's, I think it's well-liked. Um, Artist Point is the signature. Neither one of us has been, and it's, it's never considered one of the best signatures um it's always on the lower lower list of signatures anyway roaring forks um roaring forks was good um you know i think i told i think i remember telling you in the parks like it's not worth a trip to wilderness lodge but if you're going to wilderness lodge and you're exploring and you want to get something to eat uh then it's worth worth getting but i would never go specifically for roaring fork but it was good um i had it was pulled pork and then you get like i got one of the cookies from their bakery and it was very nice, um, you know, but still, you know, not one of the best quick services, not anything mind blowing. So, what would what would a criticism of Wilderness Lodge be for you? Because it's also one of the cheaper deluxes. I would have to say um, it kind of loses a little bit of points not being on monorail. Yeah, and also gift shops not that good. Gift shops not great, and. Now, this might be unfair because this is the next deluxe for us to stay at. We've we've said the next time we stay at a deluxe, we have to stay at this one. Number five, right? Yeah, but there – and there's something about Wilderness Lodge, I think, that I don't know if it would have the staying power of, like, the Polly or the Animal Kingdom for me. And what I mean is, like, I really enjoyed my time there. I enjoyed wandering. I enjoyed exploring. But – it was like, okay, this is nice. I'm ready to go back to the park. Whereas, like, Animal Kingdom Lodge, I can stay in that lobby all day. And I have stayed in that lobby all day. Um, so, like, that might change. That might be unfair because I haven't stayed there. And it's always different when you stay there. But it's always like Wilderness Lodge is like we have, like, our um, pantheon of top three and then it's the next step down. And it, it could change. I'm very interested to see what we think about it when we actually stay there. Because we've both explored. We've both checked out the geyser, the waterfall. We've both had food in different places. We've never physically stayed there. Um, so I think we'll get a better, better view. Because it does seem, you know, we have it at number five. So we're saying there's four better after we raved about it. But I would still... I wouldn't put it any higher. Maybe number four. So, like, there's something about it that's... Yeah, so with number four, I agree with I agree with staying power again. Uh, there's not much to do at number four. 
Um, it's just beautiful. One more thing about Wilderness Lodge. Um, if you are a photographer, it is an amazing place to take pictures. Um, uh, aside from number one and two, I'd say this is the next best. I'm just going through all of them right now. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Um, is there anything else you would like to say about Wilderness Lodge? Or would you like to go on to number four? No, Wilderness Lodge is great. Can't beat Oh, you can't beat Wilderness Lodge. Four but, can beat it. But, but for th- like, you can't, I should say, you can't complain about the theming. Yes. And the theming's super important with us. Um, number four, you know, we don't have too many left, um, Grand Floridian. Grand Floridian is, you know, if you're going to stay at a signature and you see it on commercials, it's probably going to be Grand Floridian. That's like the flagship hotel for Disney. It's the most famous. It's the most expensive. It's the most luxurious. Um, I used to think for a long time that it was too fancy. It was too um, snotty. But once, like, we stayed at the Poly, and we would walk to the we walked to the Grand Floridian, and it was very nice walk, and it was very nice in there. And the time before that when we were there, I went to Narcuzzi's alone. You didn't go. And it was the first time I really uh, was in the Grand Floridian for any long amount of time. And that is a lobby that is gorgeous. Yes. That's a lobby that, like, you can hang out in all day, too. They've got so many details in the lobby. They've got, you know, they got live music. They've got the elevator. They've got the giant bird cage. Um, now, the thing I also love about this place. The chandeliers. The chandeliers are gorgeous. Um, you know, you can take a lot of pictures in this lobby, too. And we did. Yeah, but I just feel like in the lobby, yes. I'm, yeah, I'm talking about resort as a whole. Okay, yeah, you're right. Um, I, yeah, I would still put Wilderness Lodge ahead. Now, the thing I also love about this place is I asked a cast member about the uh, giant birdcage, and they had an answer, and I was really impressed that they had the answer. Give um, our give our listeners a little backstory. Yeah, on it's a great it's a great little detail. So, in, in um, the times of like the adventurers, like the adventure club, even um, people would go out and explore the world, and they'd come back and they'd be, try and impress their friends with the souvenirs they got all around the world. So they'd also always try and top each other. So the birdcage in the Grand Floridian is like one of the adventurers came back and was trying so hard to be the most impressive. So they found this, you know, gaudy, you know, this ridiculous birdcage. And they, you know, are showing this off. Like, look at this souvenir I got. No one's going to beat this. Um, so it's, al- it's almost like making a joke at like how snot, you know, look how rich we are. Look how fancy we are. And again, that's something that, 99.999% of the guests that stay there will never get, never care about. Um, so, yeah, lobby is is beautiful, gorgeous. Can't say anything bad about the lobby. Um, the food, if you can, I, I wouldn't, I would put this number two for resort food. What about you? Um... You're thinking this one too. That's a contender. <laughs> I like the only reason I put number two. I mean, I love Grand Floridian Cafe. I'll go there if that's my pl- go place for brunch. Nick if, really like is obsessed with the Grand Floridian Cafe. If someone, I went there four times during the cost mm-hmm. If someone asked me uh, to go to brunch, I think Grand Floridian Cafe is the place I'd go. Um, I've been once. Um, I got the lobster burger. Yeah. I thought it was delicious. One of the best burgers I've ever had. Um, but, if, but I'm just if, thinking like quick service. Yeah, but okay. Let I'm just talking about, like because it's got. Okay, I, I haven't had Narcuzzi's. Nar, okay, that's right. I you didn't have Citricos either. I haven't had Citricos either. So. I've had Narcuzzi's. Um, Narcuzzi's was amazing. The lobster, I had the lobster. I think it was the two pound lobster or the twin lobster tails, whatever one it was. I had the table facing the contemporary, which was really nice. Um, you know. Nice and relaxing in there. It, the, the theming isn't anything spectacular in there, but it's a nice, relaxing place. The lobster was incredible. Like, I, I ate that thing in, like, five minutes. It was just so smooth. Too fancy for this guy. Yeah, I know. Um, just so so smooth, so so nice. It was, you know, one of the best-tasting lobsters I've ever had. It was so fresh. Um, so, you you know, Narcuzzi's, if, you're, if you want seafood in, in Disney... You know, you it's tough to beat Narcuzzi's. It's expensive, though. Pre- be prepared to pay. Um, but the reason I put it at number two is because it's got Victorian Alberts. Now, Victorian Alberts is my white whale. 
I need to eat at Victorian Alberts. And if you don't know what Victorian Alberts is, it is inarguably no contest, no question, the best restaurant in Walt Disney World. I'm not saying that because I've been there and it's my favorite. It's ranked every year one of the top 50 restaurants in the country. One year it was ranked number two, two, two in the country, a restaurant in Disney World. So that's why I'm thinking if you have that restaurant in your hotel, it's tough to beat it for food. That being said, I'd rather eat at the Poly than the Grand Floridian <laughs> <laughs> because it's super fancy, the food still. So in, how much is a meal for that? 250 I think 250 for two people. Oh, no way. Really? I think it's like 140 per person, something it's like that. not that bad of a... Are you sure? I might be wrong, that's but... That's not that bad of a deal. I Because th- you can sit at the chef's table, and that's more expensive because you, like, you're sitting inside the kitchen. But I'm pretty sure an uh, eight-course meal or whatever is like 120, and then you have to maybe including wine. So, yeah, it's really not that bad. Um, did you ever consider it? In the four months you were there? In the four months I was there, no, but um, I will definitely be going whenever. I'll, somehow I'll try to get I'm there. De- yeah, I, I definitely have plans to go there. be you or some friend I made? Yeah. Um, a lady friend, a lady of the evening? Um, no, not a lady of the evening. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, okay, Grand Floridian. Here's uh, one thing. I If you're paying that much money... To stay at a resort, why not pay a little less and just go to the Pali? Yeah. And it's one more monorail stop, one more boat stop. Yeah, I don't even care about the stops. Yeah. Um, and if you care about the stops, well, you can walk to the Grand Floridian from the Pali three minutes. Yeah. It, like, I don't think we're going to, we're uh, surprising anyone since we haven't mentioned the Pali yet that we're ranking the Pali higher than the Grand. And again, this is an example. It's like the Beach Club. Um, the Grand Floridian is great, but. If you've got the Pali next door, why are you staying exactly. at the Grand? You can walk to the Grand. You can enjoy the Grand. You can sit in that lobby. It's a great lobby. Um, but, yeah, Nick's right. If you're sta- if I'm staying in, in the Epcot uh, hotels, I'm staying at Boardwalk. If I'm staying on the monorail loop, I'm staying at the Pali. Now, we'll have to stay at the Grand one time just to do it. I'm sure it'll be amazing. But... It's, it's, it's tough to pull me away from the Pali. Um, and even though in, I, I do think it's number two for restaurants in Disney World, I personally wouldn't eat at, I, you know, I, don't, I would eat at the Pali every time I'm in Disney. I probably do eat at the Pali every time I'm in Disney, at least a quick service. We did, la- I ate a quick service last year. Not for brunch. Okay, yeah, because Nick's obsessed with the Grand Floridian Cafe, which isn't That's that sad. great. Um Oh, yeah, a mimosa is, is beautiful anywhere. Um, and there was something... Oh, the walk to the Grand is really nice. Um, From the Pali. Yeah. But oh, it's a short boat ride going back home for the night. Um, for, for photographers, another great picture of the Grand Floridian is while you're on the monorail in between Grand Floridian and the Magic Kingdom. It is a really nice picture. I have a picture of it, actually. It's really nice. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, like we're, we're still ranking at number four. It's still great, but it will never be the best on the resort loop. Even though, like, and, and Disney should stop saying it is. Yeah, I mean, they should start, like, putting all their efforts to advertise. The yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, so number three, uh, we've talked about this one a lot already today, the Boardwalk. Boardwalk Inn. Um, Boardwalk Inn is... Is an incredible resort. There is, there's every other resort we've had a little something to complain about. You know, I have one thing to complain about the boardwalk, but and it's just the quick service. But other than that, you got a beautiful lobby loaded with details. Mm-hmm. You got gorgeous out, you know, atmosphere, uh, you know, relaxing, beautiful, great views, transportation. A, a walk to Epcot, a boat. a boat ride to Hollywood Studios or Epcot. You got a night giant merchandise, great merchandise. Um, you got nightlife. You know, you can watch the street performers. You got a nice bar there. Jelly rolls, jelly and abracadabra. Yeah. Um, 
You've got um, a, one of the best restaurants on property, Flying Fish. It's not one of my top five or so, but it's a great restaurant. Definitely worth going. Um, and the pork belly is out of this world good. Rooms are nice. Rooms are, you know, I don't remember anything specific particular about the room but i remember being very nice very relaxing i slept on the couch even and it was and it was very nice we could see the eiffel tower from our, you, well, our, our location kind of sucked um because it was like i think there was like construction or something going on, but I, I i i didn't even care about that um pool is creepy it's the clown pool yep but again i don't care about pools but it's a cool looking pool but yeah i mean the Everything is great about the boardwalk. The only thing I'd say is the quick service boardwalk. Uh, what's it called? Boardwalk Cafe? Something like that? Boardwalk Bakery. Boardwalk Bakery. Um, you have to leave your hotel to get to it, so it's a little bit of a walk. Even though they do have coffee in Danish in the bar. I forgot about that. That's what? true. What are you smiling right by the Right by the exit. What are you smiling um, Nothing. Uh, Danish. Danish. <laughs> um, they do have Danish. But it's, I think it's a little more expensive. But the coffee you can get. Um, and the sandwiches, are, I don't remember being anything great. I don't remember really seeing anything But I think that's because, appealing in the bar or bakery other than treats. Yeah, like snacks. Like you can't really get lunch there. Um, I guess probably because if you're in, a, if you're in the area, you're probably going to go to Epcot for lunch. Yeah, that's um, true. And there is like, there's like the pizza window, but the pizza kind of sucks, you know. It's not a criticism of the boardwalk. It's a criticism of Disney. It's not, yeah, it's not for, it's Florida's fault. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, boardwalk is... Beautiful is, location, beautiful. Um, yeah, my one gripe would be the quick service. The lo- And the lobby really is impressive. It's not like jaw-dropping, like, you know, Wilderness Lodge or, or, or whatever. But there's so much great stuff in the lobby. And even, like, if you're not a fan of the... F- like, even if you don't care about the theme, like... I, I have no connection to a you know Atlantic City turn of the century, you know magicians, but once you get there and you kind of envelop yourself into it and you start noticing all the little things. One thing that's great about the the resort is almost everything there has little signs explaining the things. Now I like when Imagineers make you work for it, but if it's something like this where like I don't care, it, I I don't care going in to learn about it there. You can first of all you can spend a lot of time exploring the resort not just the lobby looking for these things but then you can get an appreciation about them um <clears throat> there's the carousel in the lobby there's the great chandelier with the um the horses the horses like the merry-go-round horses there's the the elephant uh, that's a replica of a giant elephant that used to be there there's a replica of a, a roller coaster there's those creepy little chairs Turn the chair. Here's a fun fact. Turn the chairs around, and you can get the names of the chairs. The paintings on in the, the paintings. Um, the paintings of the castles in the different. Oh yes, right on top of the concierge. Yep, the concierge. Uh, yeah, it, it's you know, it's a great re- it's a great resort. There's except for that little quick service thing. You know, there's nothing to complain about it. And if you're gonna stay at Epcot. That's the one to stay at. Right? Yes. On number two? On number two. Now, these top two, it's basically like we could switch them, and I think it would be the same. Like, I'd be fine with switching them. So I have one reason why we have it like this. I I agree with this. I I agree with this. I told you earlier, but uh, I'll explain in a moment. But number two is Animal Kingdom Lodge. Now, I don't have anything bad to say about this. No. Other than location. Yeah. And that's why it's number two. Mainly because, like, it's the most beautiful lobby you walk in. You have amazing food. You have amazing rooms with the animals, like, coming up to your your, your balcony. On my birthday a couple years ago, I came outside. I, I had a donut and a cup of coffee, and I was watching this, the zebra and giraffe walk around. And it was, like, the such a minor detail. Like you're in Disney and this is the best part of your birthday? Like it's crazy how how that happens. I just like I can't complain about the Animal Kingdom Lodge. I can spend hours walking around taking pictures, uh just sitting in the lobby. The Mara, Anthony, the zebra domes. Need I go on? But it's just the location is the only thing about it that doesn't 
go for it. Nick's right. Uh, location, you know, it's it's near Animal Kingdom Lodge. It, it's not even it's near Animal Kingdom. Yeah, it, near Animal Kingdom. Like there's and there's not even like you know a walking path to Animal Kingdom. So location is one thing, but yeah, if you're taking location out and you're just talking about the hotel itself, you know, I, give me a hotel on the planet that rivals this thing. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think you can. Um, the uh, again. Animal Kingdom Lodge is like Animal Kingdom. You know, there's details in every part of Disney World, but then when you hit Animal Kingdom, it just explodes with storytelling and details. And it's, you know, we've talked about Joe Rohde and how he's a genius, and he didn't have as much influence in the hotel, but still, they took his lead, and this place is just overflowing with details. The lobby, everything you see, I think I think Animal Kingdom Lodge is like the biggest museum of south american uh, artifacts in in florida maybe uh, one of the biggest in america um i have to i have to check on that to, but i'm pretty sure that that's right i know it has the most south african wine in the country animal kingdom lodge um everything in animal kingdom lodge is perfect it you know not kind of location in the lodge is perfect um, the theming is immaculate. You've got a freaking savanna outside. You've got, like Nick said, you've got, we, we would be in there, you know, hanging out during our, you know, break. And just giraffes would just be walking by. A line of giraffes would be walking by. It's crazy. Um, at, you know, the detail when you go outside, like the cracked rocks and everything, you've got, you know, little little waterfalls, you know, very little waterfalls coming down the walls, um, you know, the gorgeous designs when you walk through the hotel um there's there's displays of things you know one display is like um, musician uh, musical instruments or or uh um ritual headdresses there's little things like that scattered everywhere um and then we come to the food animal kingdom lodge cannot be beat when it comes to the food and we're going to include two reasons. for two reasons. Super domes. Super domes. And butternut squash soup. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I love how those are your two reasons. They got Sanat and Chico, but those Zebra are your two dome reasons. Zebra dome wins it. No, he, Nick's right. Those, those are the, like, oh, my God, those were our sna- – like, we would just – we'd go down at, like, 11 o'clock to the Mara and just get Zebra domes and butternut squash soup ah. and just be so fat and happy. Um <laughs> But okay, let's go through first the Mara, one of the best quick services on property. Yep, one of the best quick services on property. That is, if you have to have lunch somewhere, that's worth driving to. It's delicious. That chicken sandwich. Yo, do you know anything about the name? I no, was thinking about that. I don't. It was like a chicken sandwich with I think bacon, cheese. It was fried chicken. Yeah, like but a it fried was crispy chicken. It was so, it was so crazy good. good. Um, the jungle juice. I jungle juice. Yeah. Um, you know, they have a nice bakery there. Mara, excellent. And, yeah, you got the zebra domes. Then you got Boma. Boma is the best buffet on property. Not, an argue, not a question. Yeah. Um, you've got just enough of the African taste that um, you can be adventurous, but you can also not be too adventurous and take a step back and for breakfast. Um, and then you just do, you know, high-quality, typical breakfast stuff with a, with a couple African um, twists on it. But their dinner is incredible. Um, so many different flavors that you're not going to find anywhere else in you know your everyday life. Um, Boma is is perfect. Then you got Jico. Jico, one of the best restaurants on property. Um, you know, I don't know what to say about Jico that other than it, it's perfect. It's possible it's gone. Yeah, that's true. We haven't. We have not since the, the chef has left. The or? head chef of Jico moved to. Um, California Grill, and the word word on the street is that California Grill has gotten better and Jico has gotten a little worse. So I hope it's not true. We're gonna have we would we'll we'll have to eat there one day soon. Maybe that you can when you go on your next trip, you can. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jico, you know, my lamb was was. Perfection. Nick's steak was incredible. Yeah, Jico is beautiful in there. 
it like what and then like the sunset with the colors like on the wall mm -hmm. oh god it's so good there's the food tour where you get the tour of Jiko in Boma and they give you the taste the bread tasting and the soup tasting and the zebra dome oh my god it's so great and then you got Sanaa now Sanaa is in Kadani village it's in that's the DVC aspect of Animal Kingdom Lodge I still consider it Animal Kingdom Lodge yeah. of course um, Sanaa is probably my favorite restaurant on property I have said that many times because the food is the food is amazing you've got uh, South America South American South African and Indian mix and then the the actual uh, dining room is beautiful and then you've got the uh, outside the savanna and it's the only place you can eat where you can see the animals um, you can't see it in Jiko can't see it in Boma can't see it at the Mar so it's the one place on property where you can eat and see animals so that makes it amazing. And then they don't... S what? Non bread? Oh, yeah. Yeah, jeez. The non bread and the bread service. They've mm -hmm. got they got the 12 dips. Oh, my God. We, we've done a lunch there, just the non bread. And it yeah. was amazing. Oh, and then the, the lamb shank. Lamb shank. It, like, you hold out the big bone and just a hunk of lamb meat. And that was the most tender... Yeah, piece of meat. Ever oh had. my god, San and Sana is is not a deluxe or not a signature. Yeah, it's just and it should be, but it's not because not enough them. because not enough people go. Um, Sana is perfect. Now we also we have, I, I know for me, I'm sure for you, Amelkin and Lodge will always have a special place in our hearts because we um, rode out Hurricane Irma during it, mm -hmm. and. That brings me to the best part of Animal Kingdom Lodge, arguably. I think the cast members. Yes. Oh, oh yes. You're talking about the drum stuff? Well, everything. The, we're going to do an episode on our experience at Disney World during Hurricane Irma, so I don't want to talk too much about it here. Um, but, talk about the cast members. But the cast members, like, yes, they in the hurricane, they were amazing. I'll save some most of those stories for the hurricane episode. But even not during the hurricane, most of the cast members are from uh, South Africa. So you get their experience of things. And they're so friendly. They're so welcoming. They love to talk to you. Though I remember um, one of the times we stayed there, there was the guy, like the kids would be doing, you know, dance parties, you know, you know playing with the drums, and he would just be dancing. Um, I don't know. I think you were in the room when I've they were doing this. a few yeah. of the drum circles. Um, and then we had that great dude... We talked to one guy from South Africa, and I actually have a picture of him. I yep. took a picture with him. Um, we talked to him for like a half hour about going to South Africa. He was talking to us about wines. He gave us his 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 name, and he said, you know, if you ever do a trip, he's got family there that we could reach out to. I still have his name in one of my one of my phones. He he rode with us from uh, the yeah. main. Animal Kingdom Lodge. To we were going to Sanaa for dinner. That and there's night. a shuttle that takes you from from both buildings. And, and he, yeah, he rode with us, talked with a little more, uh, walked with us to the entrance of the restaurant. It was just a great, yeah, cast, so friendly, cast so so so, uh, so welcoming, welcoming. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm blanking on the word I want to say, but like you could talk to him for forever. Um, you know, it's I, I and I, I've really learned, I've learned a lot about like African culture from there. Now I know it's the Disney version of Africa. I'm not an idiot. But it makes me appreciate the cultures of Africa a lot more than I ever would have. Um, it makes me appreciate the beauty, the food. And it's something I, I really do want to visit Africa one day, partially thanks to Animal Kingdom and Animal Kingdom Lodge. Um, but, yeah, I mean, location aside, I'll never, I'll never have anything bad to say about the Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's one of the crown jewels of Disney World. And it will always be – it will be the place that we, you know – we were in a hurricane and be, you know again I don't want to talk too much about it but we had a, a great time because we were Animal Kingdom Lodge and you know when we say we can stay in that lobby for a whole day we're not kidding we stayed We've done it. we stayed in that hotel for two days straight and it really wasn't an issue at all um, so yeah Animal Kingdom Lodge perfection uh, so let's let's go to number one All Star Sports <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Number one, I mean, you know, we're not, 
You should have known from number eight that it was going to be this one. Yeah. The, if, if we talked so highly about Amethyst and Lodge for 10 minutes, number one, and it's, it's just going to be like vomiting praise. Yeah. <laughs> like, what well, well, we It's Polynesian, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the Poly. Uh, it's not even the. It's just the po- like the, it's got the poly. Nick, it's got yeah. the nickname. The we're poly. so close with it. With yeah, we're, we're friends with it. The poly is 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 perfect. I was just um, there, stayed there a week ago. Yeah, no one needs to hear that. It was a beautiful experience. Let me tell you how how much how sick we are. And, and, you know, <laughs> I I was just in Italy. All right, I I fulfilled a lifetime dream and I went to Italy. Not the Epcot one. No, yeah, real Italy. I was in Venice. I was in Florence. I was on the Milfi Coast. I was in Rome. It was the b- best two weeks of my life. I am sitting in Venice, jealous of Nick because he's at the Polynesian. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, I really am a sick individual. Now, I wasn't really jealous, but still, a part of me was like, that son of a, he gets to be at the Polynesian. And that's how amazing this place is. Like, Nick flew to Disney World because he was staying at the Polynesian. Yeah, I found uh, a fellow cast member found a deal, and I got my friend who was still working there to get her roommates and I, and we got the deal for like 130 bucks a night. And when I saw that, and I had her book it, and then 20 minutes later, I found a plane ticket, <coughs> and I was like, "It's it, I'm, I, I have to go because it's the Poly. If it was any other resort, I'd probably be like, eh. But since it was the Polynesian, I – Picked it immediately. Yeah, we when I, I found an amazing deal last year, and we stayed at the Poly for three nights, and it was, I mean, you know, what, what do you say about the Poly? It's you walk in. First of all, you, you you walk even on the outside, and it's got the waterfalls, it's got the tiki torches, torches the statues, and like the, yeah, the little statues, mm-hmm. and it's just like you know it's gonna be amazing. Then you walk into that lobby. Now, people say the lobby's changed, but I don't care. I love that lobby. You walk into that lobby, and first of all, it smells amazing. It just smells amazing. Are you, don't you agree? Yes. It smells amazing. And then, and then you're just like, like this is – the poly is special because – and it's not to sound like uh, you know, bragging or anything, but not everyone gets to stay at the poly who goes to Disney. There's a lot of people who will never get that chance. And we're not saying, you know, we're so special, you know, we have so much money or anything. But it makes you realize how special the place is. And you appreciate it so much more because, like, you are staying at the Polynesian. This was one of the first two resorts to ever open at Disney. This is the one that people are going to Disney. They want to stay, you know, they want to stay at the Polynesian. Yeah, Disney talks more about Grand Floridian. But the Polynesian is the, the the number one in Disney. I mean, come on, it, hands down. Yeah, everything about it. You got the first of all, you got the view for, of the castle from the lobby too. I want to talk about every freaking thing about this place. Could be a long time. Yeah. Um, so and then you're in line, and the cast members are great. You're, so you're in line to get it, to check in, and then they give you the lays. Come on. And then, like, for you forgot the best part of the lobby, Maui. Oh, Maui. Maui the Tiki yeah. Man in the middle, just his, with his little stand. He's like, hey, how's it going? And something It's that- Nick's favorite part of the lobby. Guys, ask Nick if he has a mini Maui. He doesn't. I do. He won't get one for himself. Yeah, but it's expensive. Disney's expensive. You got 16, uh, he's got a toy bus. But he doesn't have a mouth. <laughs> it was like three bucks. Um, but um, yeah, and Maui's something awesome. that most people don't notice about the lobby is like right when you walk in, look down, giant hidden Mickey on the, on the ground. Yeah. I have a pin of that. Um, but so that's amazing. Just there's so many good. Yeah. Just I'm, a lobby like you have if you there's like a beautiful painted map of like the Polynesian yeah. and all its buildings on the right hand side. You have uh, great great. Uh, um, souvenir place, yeah, boutique. boutique. So many, there's so many great, sou- um, you know, p- Polynesian specific merchandise that you can get. I've got my whole desk is literally all Polynesian stuff. Um, Captain Cooks, you got Captain Cooks. Hold on, let's go in order. We got so that's the, the first the floor. Mu- yeah, it's the first floor. We got you got the music, ah, oh, the beautiful music. music, so relaxing. You just I, like the displays they have behind the glass. Yeah, the displays. You've got the pool. I, again, we don't really care about the pool, but it's got the volcano. It's a very People nice pool. love it. Uh, yeah. Now, Captain Cooks is inc- 
incredible. They've got so many good things to eat. We we they weren't even staying there last year when we had lunch at Captain Cook's. And um, just right when you walk outside, it's just a pile. Of, it's just a thing of grass and like seven torches around it, and yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, it's gorgeous. You I got, did yoga last week on it. It was just such a great experience. You've got the the Dole Whips right outside. Pineapple Lani. Yep. You got the big Dole Whip spoons on the walls. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. And then that's it in the first floor. Yeah, that's in the first floor. Is it? No, I'm going to talk about that one that. at the end. <laughs> that's at the end. That gets his own thing. <laughs> um, Up on the second floor, you have uh, the monorail entrance. Yeah. On the Even right the monorail thing. entrance is great because you got it's beautiful. The, you can look at the waterfalls down. It's so nice. A um, better view of the castle on the back. You have uh, really. No. Uh, what? <laughs> it's a, it's a good cat. It's a good view either Wait, way. Wait, you can see. No, I'm saying you can see the castle from upstairs. From the monorail thing. No, from the back. Oh, 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 okay. Um, and then you have Moana Mercantile, which is okay. I mean, it's just it's a beautiful yeah. shop. Um, you've got. Kona Cafe, mm-hmm. amazing. Kona Island. Great, hold on. Kona Cafe, great for breakfast. Incredible breakfast. Ch- fairly cheap for the amount of food you get. Yep. And then the dinner is incredible, too. So nice and relaxing in there. You got Kona Island, where you got the f- uh, the fish. The sushi. Sushi bar, coffee bar. S- some of the f- freshest sushi you'll ever have. You'll pay for it, though. It was like four bucks a piece. Oh, was it? But it was crazy good. Um, you can also buy the rolls from Kona. Kona has yes. the best rolls in the world. They're Hawaiian bread with um uh co- no, it's it's pineapple bread with coconut macadamia nuts? Yeah, macadamia butter something like that. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um and then you can buy that separately at the uh Kona Island Cafe bar whatever the heck it's called. Um so you can have that. Then you got Ohana. And Ohana's amazing. Ohana, you know, great theming in Ohana. The food, the food range is from good to great. Um, the best part of Ohana is the the dessert, don't you think? The bread pudding. Mm-hmm. When I went to Ohana uh, one time on the college program, we were giving, uh, she was giving us all the food. Then she comes with the dessert, and she gives us our check. And she's like, anything else you want? And I jokingly said, well, if you want to give us a bread pudding to bring home. And she looks around, and she goes, Eh, you're my last table. So she gave us an entire dessert, and I went home. I ate the whole thing by That's myself. That's amazing. I don't know if I knew that. That's amazing. Um, and then you got the bar at Kona, or not at Kona, at Ohana. Um, Ohana. What's the bar called? Isn't it just no? It's got a name. Uh, whatever. Um, it's right in front, and then you so you can order, um, you can order like pineapple nachos, and then you can order an individual serving of the bread pudding. That's right. Oh my God, this place is amazing. We didn't even mention the breakfast of Ohana. We haven't done that, but you didn't do the Ohana breakfast. No, you didn't. No. I did not. I really thought you did. No. Um, Are you lying? No, I did <laughs> not do it. Um, it's just so it's a breakfast. I don't really know like how it differs from any other Disney breakfast, and I even look at the menu, but I know it's a character breakfast. I think it's bacon and sausage. Okay. And um, I don't think it's pancakes. I don't think it's like yeah. I'm not sure. Really? Okay. I don't know. Um, and then you have Mickey, Pluto, Lilo, and Stitch. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure we brought up that. Then you have the beautiful hotel buildings. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Aero Terrero, wherever that is. Yeah. Was, was that the one we were at? The the rooms in the poly are the best rooms in Disney World. So beautiful. Don't, like, there's so much detail in the room. Don't don't even try and debate me with that. Don't stop stop tweeting. Yeah. Yeah. Stop yelling at we me. We don't have Twitter. Um. The rooms are huge. Yes. The rooms are huge. They could fit like 10 people. Yeah. Um, and you got the pillows, the nice long pillows. Oh. What do they say? Um, sweet Dreams, Teoto Mai Tai, um, something Nani. Um, uh, just so you, Polynesian employees no, know. No, 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 I'm taking don't one. Don't incriminate yourself. I'm taking one next we'll time. We'll buy one, guys. Um, yeah. The rooms are amazing. And now, okay, everyone, sit back. Is that everything? I think it's everything. So, some rooms have a great view of the monorail, yeah, great yeah, view yeah. of the castle, Spaceship Earth. Spaceship Earth? Space Mountain. <laughs> uh, Pandora. <laughs> We're not forgetting anything, are we? Uh, the walk, you know, you can walk to the uh, Grand Floridian. It's a boat ride, you know. Lighting of the torches is very nice. Lighting of the torches is awesome. 
beautiful at night, you know, transportation, you can't beat it. That's why it beats the Animal Kingdom, because of transportation. And location. Never take the bus anywhere, um, unless you're going to Animal Kingdom. But, um, and then, there's the best part about it. The creme de la creme. The best place on the planet Earth. Trader Sam's. Trader Grog. Sam's. Grotto. Now, we've talked about Trader Sam's before. I don't think I'll go an episode without talking about Trader Sam's, because it's literally my favorite place on property. Uh, you know, Trader Sam's. This, 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 Let's just go, like, you know, you got the drinks. F- drinks, amazing. The food. Food, good. We only had the food a couple times, but it was good. Yeah, but cast the, members. Cast members, the oh, yeah. the most fun. Everyone's drunk, and they're having so much fun, and you'll get drunk, and you'll have fun. And when people, like we've said before, when people order certain drinks, certain things happen. When you sit in certain seats, certain things happen. You know, it's just the most the most fun you'll have in the parks. And I, I mean, excuse me, um, on property. Because people are getting into it. They're drinking. They're having fun. It's that. Uh, it's just like the, not just like, but like the Adventurers Club. It's Disney entertainment, Disney humor with an adult twist. Kids aren't allowed in after 8 o'clock. And it's not because it's getting crazy, but you can just, it's more relaxed. You can you know, you can scream, some, you know, two shots of rum. You, that's that's an inside thing. If you've been to Trey Sam's, you know what that is. You can take the cups home. So certain drinks have certain uh, great themed cups. I think, I think it's the, the... The themed cups. The themed cups are the th- ones where things happen. Yeah. I think there's one that's not. If you get the three, the shots. Okay. Nothing happens. The flight, then. nothing happens for the flight. Um should we talk about the specific things that happen? No, no, okay, no. Okay, okay. Um, if you, the one thing you might have to ask about sitting in certain places, but they'll know what you're talking about. Definitely worth asking because it's so much fun. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I have I have the shrunken zombie head cup. I have the. Uh, um, Hippopotamitai cup. I think mine's the Krakatoa. Nick's got the the volcano. Um, you know, pa, uh, Trader Sam's is is literally my favorite place. But then and then you can go outside on the Tiki Terrace and you can order basically everything there. Plus, there's an alcoholic Dole Whip. Alcoholic Dole Whip. Yeah, it's amazing. It's it's, it's, it's as good as you think it is. Um, Tiki. Tiki Terrace is beautiful because, and this is the genius of Trader Sam's. If you want to have the fun, energetic, crazy time, you go inside. But then if you want to relax and just hang out, you go outside. You got the beautiful Hawaiian music. You got the great, you know, great lights. You got the tiki torches. You got the rock waterfall. So beautiful. Um, You know, like when we stayed there, I did Trader Sam's every night. Two of the nights I was inside having a good time. But one of the nights I just wanted to, you know, the storm was coming. I was just, you know, kind of wanted to be by myself, relax. And I went out to the Tiki Terrace, and it was gorgeous. Um, Last time we were there, we did both. You know, had a great time both times. So, I mean, the Polynesian, it's got everything. And every other thing, every other one, we've found at least one negative. There's not a single negative about the Polynesian. The only single negative about the Polynesian, I got one. It's the price. I just spit a little. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but I mean, but compared, the pri- to, compared yeah. to some of these, like for pricing of it actually deluxe, we, how is it? Yeah, not it's terrible. really it's not terrible, and you get your money's worth. Yes. Now like, and we now we've both stayed. Every time we've stayed there, I stayed there once. You stayed there twice, but we stayed at uh, discounts, super discounts, and that is like a steal. Yeah. Um, but. There is not a single thing you can criticize the poly for. Every aspect of food is great. Merchandise is great. We didn't talk about merchandise in Animal Kingdom Lodge, but Animal Kingdom Lodge. Oh, uh, Zawadi. Yeah, Zawadi Traders has some of the best, amazing merchandise. Um, Animal Kingdom Lodge, probably the best merchandise hotel. Yeah, uh, poly. Poly. Well, cool. Yeah, it's one. Of, yeah, it's okay. Poly's I think we have more too. poly merchandise than Animal Kingdom Lodge. I do, but Both I have a walking stick from Animal Kingdom Lodge. Um, yeah, merchandise, you got it. Theming, you got it. Cast members, you got it. Food, you got it. Uh, you know, rooms, you got it. Location, you got it. Just not a bad, like, price, Bar, obviously. you got it. And the price, is it's probably lower than the grand, 
lower than the uh, contemporary, contemporary, about the same as the Beach Club and the Yacht Club. Now you're gonna stay. It's Animal Kingdom and Wilderness are always cheaper because the, their um, location is the worst of the eight because you can't walk anywhere to them. Um, you can walk or take a monorail with the other six. But the Poly is 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 the king. You know, I I, I almost feel bad because Am, it's like Animal Kingdom's like I saved you during the during the storm, <laughs> and you ranked me number two. Animal Kingdom is number one in our hearts, but in our heads. <laughs> no, Polly is number one in full. All right, that's true too. Polly just you wins can't everything. Poly, you yeah. can't. Like I could stay in Disney. I could do a trip to Disney World if it was just the Polly, and I think I'd have a great time. Yeah, <laughs> just hanging out, eating, drinking. Um, and you can also watch. I still haven't ever caught it, but you can watch the water pageant parade. Mm-hmm. The electric. What are they called? Electric water pageant. Yeah, um, from the Polly. So yeah. Polly is is unbeatable in in every single one of these. I would say it's either number one or number two. Animal Kingdom might be better themed, better details. Say it one more time. Every single, every single category we can think of, it's either oh. the best or the second best. Yes, I'd say food. Animal Kingdom beats it. Theming. Animal Kingdom beats it. Merchandise. Animal Kingdom might beat it. And then it wins everything else. Yeah, and even the ones that Animal Kingdom beats it at, it's super close. Um, you know, it's the only one that we have no criticisms, no complaints about it. It's it's literally perfect. There is not if you can find a complaint about the Polynesian, I'd lo- post it on on Nick's Instagram. A legit complaint. Yeah, like a real complaint. I'd be interested to see if anyone can actually complain. Not the price. Don't complain about the price. You know what the price is going in. They're the deluxes. They're going to yeah. be expensive. You're, you know, if you want, if you don't want to pay a lot. Disney gives you that op- that option. But you know what you're paying with for here. So I'm going to end this podcast, Nick, with a question for you. Okay. It's a question that will shake you to your very core. I'm ready. No, it's not that bad. Um, is there any non-deluxe hotel that you would rather stay at than a deluxe hotel? No. I think – so I think – I'm just going through all them in my head. I think the best non-deluxe hotel is Port Orleans Riverside. Probably. And, again, I, I'm a sucker for location. So I say having all these be so close, all these be walking distance to a park wins. Um, I mean, obviously price, but no. Do I, you think – my last question. Do you think every one of these hotels is worth the price? We got dead air, sir. Yeah, I do. I would say maybe Yacht Club just because, like, you have Beach Club and Boardwalk right next to it. And it doesn't really offer anything, but it is cheaper than the other two. I would not pay to stay at the Yacht Club or the Beach Club since I got the Boardwalk. And I would not pay to stay at the Contemporary. Yeah, but what was your question? Like, is it worth it? Is it it? worth it? I don't think it's worth the price to stay at the Contemporary. Okay. I think it's worth the price to stay at the Grand or the Poly. Okay. That's I, just my opinion. I see. What you, I, that's a good opinion. Um, so I think that about wraps it up for the episode. I think we're good. Those were our ranked deluxe hotels. Juan, well, thank you all for listening. You can find me on Instagram at Disney Detailer. Anthony, nothing yet? No social media? This might be changing in the future, but as of right now, I'm still off the grid. Everything will be directed towards me, Disney Detailer. I want to thank you all for listening, and to everyone out there, Kungaloosh! Kungaloosh! Kungaloosh!